Welcome to part 5 of my tutorial series where I try and give a top level overview of my workflow when creating a animated character from scratch all the way from concept art to a animated game ready model and um, I'll try to give a overview of my my philosophy, my experience and try to cover some common pitfalls, misconceptions and give some tips and advice along the way. And if you want to support the making of these videos, you can find me on Patreon, link in the description. But yeah, this is part five and it's time to start unwrapping the high poly model. Okay, so the most basic uh, instruction I suppose I can give is I uh, just go in, hold control and left click in order to uh, find the closest uh, path between two vertices. Then I hit control E and uh, go to uh, mark seam. I mentioned before the shortcut shortcuts might be a bit different for you depending on what version of Blender and how you set up your configuration and so on. I'm using older settings, but the important part is to just look up and figure out what these uh, hotkeys are. You, you see here how I'm, I'm clicking and working out where to, to place the seams. And if you're new to unwrapping uh, 3D models, the general idea is to take a 3D shape and uh, mark out the uh, seams where this shape will be cut up in order to uh, flatten it into a surface which you can then use in order to uh, map uh, the textures onto the model. So in general you'll often end up unwrapping uh, some type of uh, cylinder especially when working with uh, characters. You can view the arms as cylinders, the legs as cylinders, the torso as cylinders, the fingers as cylinders, the toes as cylinders, and so on and so on. And the most basic level unwrapping of a cylinder is just to mark a seam along the, the length of the cylinder. And then you sort of cap off uh, the tops if you, if you have any. If uh, the tips are rounded, you often just uh, end up extending the, the lengthwise cut over the top of the cylinder in order to unwrap a sort of sausage, I guess. <laughs> what you see me doing here in the background is uh, a little bit of cleanup. You see I get these tiny triangles uh, among the other unwraps and you're gonna end up with these uh, when using the control click find shortest path seems every here and there because Blender doesn't really pay attention to those things so when when the seams meet every now and then it'll end up uh, marking all the sides of a triangle so just go in check the UV map find the triangles turn on the uh, what is it called sync uh, selection or something there are two little arrows pointing up and down in the UV window when you have that active, you can go in and select a vertice or face or whatever in the UV map and then go back to the 3D model and the selection will have translated to the 3D model. So you can just hit the, what is it, comma on the numpad in order to zoom in on that specific point and figure out, okay, what's gone wrong here and how, how should I fix it? And Another type of issue you'll end up running into, especially with higher poly models, is these, you see here, the overwrap, overlapping areas. This, of course, will lead to issues because you'll be mapping textures to the same area twice. So when you're looking at the UV map, try to find these overlapping areas. And, well, I actually strongly recommend getting a plugin such as UV Pack Master 2, which I'm using. This allows you to 
automatically validate the UVs and check for overlapping areas. It also allows you to pack your UV maps, which oh, I've been unwrapping models for almost 20 years <laughs> in Blender, and up until a couple of years ago, I was doing this by hand, and it takes time, and it's very tedious work. Finding UV Pack Master really it's such a relief. I, I don't have to do the packing step at all. I can just let UV Pack Master handle all of that and I get these really nice optimized UV maps. So just automa automatically. <laughs> But yeah, other than that, when uh, unwrapping things that can't be uh, sort of generalized into cylinders like the, the face here, just try and as often as you can place the seams in uh, inside folds and try to hide them in an areas where a, uh, a sort of natural, uh, how do I explain this? Well, I think hiding them is a good way of putting it. When when you're texturing, if you have really well-made UV maps where all the seams are in very natural places where, where you can't really see them uh, that much, you can uh, use a uh, texture mapping technique called UV projection. And a lot of... Uh, textures or rather smart materials if you get them uh, for substance painter they're gonna be using uv projection by default and if your seams are clearly visible you're gonna end up with these uh, strange texture artifacts along those seams they're gonna be visible to, to the player or i mean whoever is seeing the 3d model this can be solved using something called triplanar mapping but it can be a little bit of a fuss it, opening up the smart materials with all the the parts and changing all the UV projection settings to triplanar projection but I end up often preferring to do these rather quick and dirty unwraps uh, for the high poly models at least and try and stick with triplanar but it's something to keep in mind and here you see me unwrapping the uh, the propane tank and you can also see on the right side here that all the modifiers are gone that's because I've applied all of the modifiers and you can see that the geometry is kind of dense along all the edges where the bevel modifier has added a lot of loops and this you, you generally don't want to do this when editing a model because it's it's kind of messy when you're working with all the, the vertices and so on, but you, on the other hand, when you're unwrapping the high poly model, once you're done with all the editing and you know I'm not going to do any more changes to the model, you want to apply everything and unwrap it that way. Because otherwise, it's going to try when you export it to apply all, all of these modifiers and the UV map will try to compensate for this, but all the extra geometry can lead to some uh, small issues and kinks uh, here and there. So, in general, try to apply all of the modifiers before unwrapping. When unwrapping dome shapes, like the top of uh, the uh, propane tank, there is a sort of trade-off between if you just unwrap it, unwrap a seam along the base you'll end up with a what looks like a nice uh, UV map of a uh, sort of circle filled in circle but this leads to uh, some compression in the middle of the, the UV map you'll, you'll get uh, natural when you're trying to flatten this out to a circle you're gonna have the uh, triangles or quads or whatever in the center of the dome are gonna be sort of squashed together and this leads to less uh, texture quality 
the further you get up the dome. So oftentimes you'll end up uh, either splitting it in half or adding a seam from the base up to the middle in order to uh, sort of relieve the, the tension, <laughs> if you want to think about it that way. Other than that, um, classically, some of the little tips and tricks I can give, I suppose, is um, areas that are less important, say the underside of the feet of a character, or the underside of a backpack, or areas with little details, like with few details rather, <laughs> where you, you don't have a lot of go stuff going on, you can often get away with scaling down those UV islands that you've unwrapped from those areas in order to be able to scale up more important areas. You very often see with characters that the, uh, the face has a very disproportionate uh, amount of texture space allotted to it because, well, faces are extremely important to, to the players or whoever is viewing the 3D models. Though, these days it's become not quite as important, especially for the, the high poly models that you're using for baking. I often end up uh, doing the high poly models with uh, several materials. So, for example, I think I am using three or four this model, one for the the tank and the grenade, one for the uh, sort of fleshy parts, the torso, the feet, and one for the, the legs, the pants, and so on. And I'm also using very high resolution maps, so 4K or even 8K uh, texture maps, and my system can handle that, so that's, that's fine. I, I don't really need to worry about trying to optimize them in that sense. On the other hand, when I move on to the, the low poly model, then I use a single material with uh, sort of one unwrap for the whole thing, where I've packed everything into one uh, texture. And at that point, you can start making savings by minimizing the, the feet uh, and so on. And, well, of course, the... The real-time low-poly model also uses a lot smaller uh, textures. I think I'm using a 1024 by 1024 or something like that. But yeah, um, that's pretty much covers the basics of uh, UV unwrapping. You just need to do it often and when you're making creating these kind of 3D assets, you will end up doing it often. So <laughs> you, you learn the basics. You learn how to unwrap a cube. You learn how to unwrap a cylinder. You learn how to unwrap a sphere. You learn how to unwrap a torus and so on. And no matter what you're working with, you're going to end up with some combination of these. And when everything else fails, just try to hide the seams avoid overlap and uh, yeah keep at it <laughs> well I think we are running out of time for this video but as usual thanks so much for watching and uh, hopefully I'll see you in part 6 where we'll start working on one of uh, my favorite things, the, uh, the texturing. This is when you go from just a sort of abstract 3D shape and start really seeing what this thing is gonna look like. And yeah, that, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Bye. <laughs>